In this tutorial uh, we're going to look at uh, a subsection of task 2, uh, specifically the SOLIDWORKS simulation with gravity. Uh, and This relates to the, uh, to the uh, specification that the uh, case lid can't sag more than one millimeter uh, when open to 180 degrees. So the uh, the lid of the case is joined onto the uh, base of the case uh, using uh, a living hinge. So just in case you don't know what a living hinge is, uh, you, when you have a, a injection molded part, you can create a, a flexible piece of the part. Uh, piece of the component uh, which will act as a hinge and the way that you do this is you make sure the wall thickness of the hinge is uh, thinner than the standard wall thickness so say the standard wall thickness uh, in this example was one to two millimeters uh, the hinge would uh, typically be 0.2 of a mil thick and uh, with some clever uh, uh, injection techniques as well you can get the molecules of the polymer lying across the hin hinge so that the hinge is strong but it's uh, flexible as well so uh, yeah uh, this is the sort of geometry that you'd be looking at this is a cross section of a, a Tupperware or some sort of uh, sandwich case and the uh, the diagram in A shows it open and then in B closed so you can see that the hinge has flexed uh, through approximately 90 degrees uh, it's got a 90 degree angle there so that's what we're looking to design into our case and uh, we have an example of it here uh, in this model if we just uh, turn both halves on. So uh, this is a single bodied part uh, there's a single solid body here so I've chosen to model it uh, all as a single part. Uh, now you may not have done this uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it in terms of uh, the simulation that we're going to run but, uh, but in some ways it's nicer to, to uh, model the lid and model the lower half uh, separately and that's okay if you've done it that way uh, there's a way that you can unify those two and take them through into the simulation uh, you could use an assembly to do that uh, but when you start uh, including assemblies in simulations the calculation time tr tends to increase quite a lot so uh, let's assume that you've modeled the lid and the lower portion separately so unlike this uh, the way that you uh, would then prepare them for the simulation would be by creating a new part so you could create a new blank part and then you can import your lid and your lower section into that new part so you can see here I've already imported the lid uh, I'm going to import the lower section now uh, I just have to uh, quickly get back into uh, this part right so we're going to import the lower section so the way that you do this is in the insert menu and insert part and then choose the part that you want to uh, insert into the new part so in my case it's this part here and as you can see it comes in very much like uh, when you're inserting a component in an assembly uh, now we can we can start placing this uh, in relation to the uh, to the lid that we've already imported uh, and the way that we do that is you make sure that you have the uh, launch move dialog selected here uh, it may, may not be selected by default so just check that that's selected click anywhere in the window and then what happens is this uh, mate settings uh, rollout appears and this behaves very much in the same way that the uh, assembly uh, comp uh, component mates behave so to begin with we can line up these top surfaces of each part so we click on one hold down control and click on the other and you can see that they've uh, they've become coincident those two surfaces so if we're happy with that we can click add 
and you can see we've got a coincident mate saved now. Uh, because of the way that I've created both of these parts, the uh, the right planes here line up on uh, both parts. So I can make that right plane with that right plane. Uh, you can see there that uh, the parts line up on that axis now. And again, if I'm happy with that, mate, I just click on Add, and it, it appears in the uh, in the uh, box down here. So there's one last one to uh, to uh, get them into position. And again, because of the way that I've created these, I know that this plane here and this plane here should be coincident. And again, if we click on Add, if we're happy with that. So now I've I've moved the uh, two bodies into position. Uh, I can click on OK there and get out of there. So even though you've created the lid and the lower portion of the box as two separate parts, you can create a new part and import them uh, into there. Uh, now there's one more thing that we have to do before we go into the uh, the FEA portion of this tutorial, and that's create the hinge geometry, which is going to bridge the gap between these two uh, solid bodies. And the way that I'm going to do that is just sketch on the right plane here. So we're looking at them side on. And then draw in some hinge geometry uh, just roughly to begin with, which bridges the gap between these two parts. So you, you'll take your time and create this geometry uh, better than I'm doing here. And just for the interests of brevity, I'm just doing a quick approximation. So we'll just pull these up a little bit. Uh, now the critical thing about this hinge is the uh, the thickness of the thinnest portion of the hinge because in reality that would be the the part of the hinge that does the majority of the flexing when the uh, when the part is uh, closed so we'll just put uh, a center line on here Anyway, you, you, as I say, you would take a, a lot longer to uh, get this hinge geometry correct. But the critical uh, measurement of this hinge is that measurement there. So it's from the from the uh, upside of this uh, this concave cut to the top of the hinge. And at the moment, that's a bit thick for our purposes. So let's uh, let's make this nice and small so that we do get some noticeable uh, flex in the simulation. So again, because we haven't constrained this, it's uh, it's kind of gone out of whack a little bit. But we'll put some uh, some more dimensions in there just to hold it where we want it. So there we go, something like that. So if we go into features now, we can extrude this profile. And if we just extrude it up to where the round begins on each corner. So we'll do an extrude up to vertex in both directions. So extrude up to vertex in this direction as well. And we'll hit this vertex here. So you can see what we've done there is we've extruded that hinge geometry and it's bridged the gap between the uh, lid and the lower portion. So we're uh, pretty much ready to go through into uh, simulation now. So if, sim if the simulation tab isn't open, uh, you sometimes have to go into Office Products and uh, SolidWorks simulation there. And we want to go New Study, Static, and then OK. We're in. So there's three main things that we have to do here. We have to uh, apply a material to the part. 
uh, we have to create uh, at least one fixture and we have to create at least one uh, load. So we'll start with the material and if you right click on the part here and uh, apply edit material. Now the default plastics in SOLIDWORKS uh, uh, don't con all contain all the information that we need to run the analysis uh, especially the one that we're interested in which is the polypropylene homopolyer polymer which is here in the uh, plastics folder uh, specifically it doesn't have a yield strength uh, I mean we don't really need the yield strength for our purposes but the uh, the software won't run the analysis without a yield strength so there are two ways around this if your installation doesn't allow you to create custom materials you'll have to uh, find out what the yield and the uh, and the elastic modulus the Young's modulus are from uh, a data sheet on uh, polypropylene and you'll have to find the nearest match that you can from these default materials that will run so that it has a yield strength value uh, alternatively if you can create custom materials uh, then the way that you uh, that you put your, your your own yield strength value in here is if you right click on uh, on the material go to copy and then scroll down to the bottom and you should have a custom materials folder uh, with various folders in it if there are no folders in there you can right click and uh, create a new category and a new folder will pop up I've got a plastics folder already so if I select that and then right click and paste and you can see polypropylene homopolymer gets pasted in there and the difference is when you paste it in there because it's in your custom materials folder you can enter values in these boxes yourself so I've already pulled the yield value out of uh, a data sheet for polypropylene so I've entered that so it will allow me to apply that now so I've applied that to the part and you can see it's it's listed at the side of the solid body there so that's the material applied uh, the next thing we want to do is add some connections uh, sorry add some fixtures uh, we want to add totally fixed geometry and essentially we want to glue the bottom of the box here to the surface that it's standing on so that's okay we've done that you can see the icons are indicating that that whole face is fixed the last thing that we need to do is apply a load to this uh, and the load is just going to be gravity so it's just going to sag under its own weight uh, gravity happens to uh, be acting in the correct direction if it wasn't you can flick the direction here you can change the value if you want to uh, analyze this on uh, env in environments that have different gravity and you can uh, apply it in different directions but we're happy with that so we set up the case now uh, the last thing that we have to do is just right click on mesh and mesh and run so you can see that our run has completed now uh, and by default uh, you are looking at the stress plot of the part so as you'd expect the thinnest section of the part the hinge uh, is the place where uh, the greatest stress is occurring but we're not really that bothered about that we're more interested in the maximum displacement so if you double click on the displacement plot you can see that the uh, the edge of the lid here is the part that moved the most uh, as we'd expect and it's moving 2.7 uh, nearly 2.8 millimeters so that's unacceptable for for us so the way that you now change that is you drop back into your model and you'd edit the cross section of the hinge so you would thicken the hinge up slightly so it's uh, 0.15 at the moment so if we make it 0.25 and then ok that Refer refresh just to check that that's working and then if we go back into the study and right click on mesh we can mesh and run again so you can see we've uh, we've run the uh, uh, 
uh, analysis again and we're getting 2.5 millimeter uh, displacement on the end here so obviously we'd want to drop back into the model again and change the thickness of the hinge or maybe uh, change the wall thickness of the entire case maybe that would be one way to uh, reduce the mass of this section here so you obviously play around with the part and uh, rerun the study and just take as many iterations as you need to satisfy the constraint one thing I would say is obviously you could make a very large hinge very thick hinge and you would instantly satisfy the less than one mil constraint the problem is with that is that uh, then your uh, living hinge uh, wouldn't function properly so the trick is to get the hinge as thin as possible uh, within reason uh, I would probably say the thinnest hinge uh, should be no less than uh, 0.15 but to get it as thin as possible down to that uh, down to that figure uh, while still uh, satisfying this one millimeter constraint uh, so that's pretty much everything for that section of the brief